Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Congress has codified same-sex marriage, sending it off to the White House to become law. But concerns still linger over protections for religious liberty. NTD's Melina Wisecup joins us from the Capitol with more. Melina, what exactly can you tell us about this bill uh, moving forward? This bill requires all 50 states to recognize same-sex marriage if it was legal in the state in which it was performed, but it does not require all states to legalize same-sex marriage. However, it does alter the federal definition of a marriage by repealing the Defense of Marriage Act, which specifically defines marriage as a union between one man and one woman. Democrats held a formal ceremony today after the passage of this bill, and it was a bipartisan bill. There were 39 House Republicans who joined with House Democrats to pass it. And on top of that, there were 12 Republicans in the Senate which approved of this measure uh, last week. Here's House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's comments on the passage of this bill earlier today. Landmark law, change in the law uh, for full equality. Now the federal government will never stand in the way of anyone marrying the person you love. Now, the House did previously pass this bill, but they had to vote on it again today after the Senate made changes to it. Those changes that were made were meant to address some religious liberty issues, which were raised by some Republicans. And while those changes were made to further ensure protections for religious groups, some conservative organizations are still saying it doesn't do enough. For example, a conservative legal organization called the Alliance Defending Freedom argues that it could make religious freedom and free speech cases harder to win because they say it embeds a false definition of marriage in the American legal fabric. But nonetheless, it is off to the White House now where President Biden is expected to sign it. And in another key vote, the House today passed the National Defense Authorization Act for 2023 with overwhelming bipartisan support. It in this bill repeals the vaccine mandate for military members. There were about 200 Democrats who voted to pass this. Some Democrats on the floor saying that they believe the vaccine mandate served its purpose while it was there, but that it's not needed anymore. And in addition, this bill also bars U.S. manufacturers from using Chinese-made uh, semiconductors, which is, an, which is just one step closer towards pulling our critical manufacturing out of China and bringing it here back home, which is an effort that has also garnered overwhelming bipartisan support. The bill also includes around $10 billion to boost Taiwan's defense capabilities. But the catch is Congress still needs to pass the annual government funding bill in order for the Pentagon to get the money to implement these new policies and right now that bill is tied up and not looking like it's going anywhere. Here's Senate Leader Chuck Schumer today on the floor speaking on the urgent need to get this done. And we need to do whatever it takes to make that happen. We need to make sure our whole government is postured to compete with China, both at DOD and across the government. We need to fund our efforts to assist the Ukrainians. We need to fund our new communities and our friends in Taiwan. And lawmakers still have not agreed on a top line number for that government funding bill. And if they can't reach a deal on that, they will have to pass another short term funding bill um, with less than 10 days to get this done until a government shutdown kicks in. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Wisecup, NTD News. And now that the White House has passed the same sex marriage bill, it's heading to President Biden's desk for his signature. If it does become law, it would have major consequences for religious communities and organizations. Troy Miller is the CEO of NRB, National Religious Broadcasters, and we had a chance to sit down with him to discuss. Here's a look. Troy Miller, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here today. If you could tell us a little bit about this bill, there's a lot of mixed reaction in the uh, faith community, and where do you stand? Yeah, there is a lot of mixed reaction, a lot of misunderstanding about the bill and what the bill really does. Uh, first of all, we don't believe the bill was really necessary to begin with. We think it's a it's a push, and we think it's kind of even the Respect for Marriage Act is kind of an erroneous title for the bill because it's really about pushing beliefs on other people, uh, people that don't hold those kind of beliefs. So the bill itself codifies into law 
that same-sex unions uh, must be recognized by uh, federal government and state government entities and state-to-state -state entities. So, so that's kind of what they say the bill was about. They kind of tossed in this interracial marriages in there as well. Uh, again, an issue that really didn't need to be addressed or covered in, the, in America. But then the bill goes on to do some really kind of sort of, we think, sinister sort of things in the fact that it opens up what we believe the avenue for litigation or for civil suits if you don't agree or affirm same-sex marriages. So that's our concern. That's a concern of a lot of the religious community, the ecumenical community on this bill. And the legal scholars have looked at that and said, yeah, that's really an open issue. Bring us back through history. How were these rights and religious liberties traditionally uh, protected? Yeah, so it's it's kind of really interesting because the, the right of conscience, the right to free exercise of religion, the right of freedom of speech have, have really always been protected under the law. There are many court cases that have said religious institutions can hire who they want to hire um, and they cannot hire who they want to hire. And so they've always had this kind of carve outs in the law and some folks in the Congress brought that up and said, oh, the religious institutes have all these, but this is a little bit different. So we've seen this evolution that has gone from, oh, you have these protections under the law to, to do this, but we've seen this just sort of constant chipping away at it, this constant sort of attack. And I think that's because, you know, the Christian worldview is kind of the last firewall that stands against this kind of leftist, woke, kind of Marxist agenda that's moving its way through the institutions uh, of America and through the halls of Congress quite honestly. And it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that it's going to put religious believers in a situation where they almost have to betray their conscience and at the same time exposing them to potential liability. Yeah, we think that's the actual purpose of the law, that the real kind of issue behind the law itself is to push Christians to betray their conscience, to betray their beliefs, or put them in this kind of you know threatening situation. Well, if you don't betray that, if you don't affirm same-sex unions, then you're going to be subject to all these civil lawsuits. You could even possibly be subject to to losing government funding, grants, even though the law sounds like it says it protects those things in there, it really doesn't protect those unless you're being forced to celebrate or participate in the unions. But let me to give you an example. So an adoption agency, I happen to be an adopted father of four adopted kids. So an adopted agency that's a Christian adoption agency that believes that the nuclear family unit is a father and a mother raising children, and that's their, their deeply held religious belief, their deeply held conviction from the Bible. So they say, look, we don't do adoptions for same-sex couples. There are other agencies, here's some referrals, you can go here and get those adoptions. Um, so rather than those couples going to the other agency, no, 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 you need to affirm us as a same-sex couple, we're gonna bring a lawsuit against you. You see how there's a difference there? They're really not participating in the, in the marriage, they're not being forced to participate in the marriage, but they're being forced to, to believe or to do something that violates their beliefs. So this bill has passed, uh, is there any recourse? Well, I think a, a, a recourse is going to come in the courts. This is this bill is going to get challenged. There will be organizations that will will bring up these cases against Christian entities, Christian organizations. It's going to end up in the courts, and ultimately the courts are going to have to decide it. But in the meantime, organizations who really do hold to firm biblical beliefs that the nuclear family is a man and a woman raising children, and that's the kind of core of our society, and they hold that because that's their that's their interpretation and belief that the, their scriptures tell them whether they're they're Christian or Muslim or 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 Jewish you know that's their beliefs they need to shore up their statements of faith and their missions of their organizations to state that outright so that they have some religious grounds to stand on when these suits come to say no this is why we hold this belief because this is in our scriptures our text this is what we believe Troy Miller thank you so much thank you and the Biden administration is cheering the release of Brittany Griner, but some Republicans say the deal with Russia is pricey and unfair. NTD's Iris Tao brings us more from the White House. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. 
President Biden hailing the release of Brittany Griner, saying the WNBA star is on her way home after months in Russian detention. What's your mood? Happy. <laughs> we never stopped pushing for her release. It took painstaking and intense negotiations. In exchange for Griner, the U.S. released Russian arms dealer Victor Bout, also known as the Merchant of Death. He's serving a 25-year prison sentence on terrorism charges for conspiring to kill Americans. And some Republicans voice concerns about the price of the prisoner swap, with top House Republican Kevin McCarthy calling it a gift to Vladimir Putin that endangers American lives. Meanwhile, the White House today wouldn't say if there are security concerns coming from Bao's release, other than saying that Biden's committed to protecting national security. The president uh, did not make this decision lightly, but he believed this was the right thing uh, to do to secure Britney's uh, release. And we are always going to stay vigilant. The deal is also facing criticism for leaving out Paul Whelan, a former U.S. Marine detained in Russia for the past four years. This is a precarious situation that needs to be resolved quickly. My bags are packed. I'm ready to go home. I just need an airplane to come and get me. The White House was pressed today specifically on if Griner was given higher priority as a celebrity. Here's the response. It was either Britney or no one at all. And, uh, and you know, we're not going to apologize for that. We are not going to stop to bring Paul Whelan home. And some, including Republican Senator Marco Rubio, are warning that a deal could incentivize the other countries to take Americans into custody. The U.S. currently considers Iran and China to also have wrongfully detained Americans. The White House said President Biden talked to Chinese leader Xi Jinping in person about the issue, but there's no update so far. Reporting from the White House, Aris Tao, NTD News. An 18-year-old has been elected mayor in Earl, Arkansas. Jalen Smith just graduated high school, and now he's off to be one of the country's youngest elected mayors. Earl is a rural town with a population of about 1,800, and Smith, the newly elected young mayor, is a Democrat, and he won against his opponent, Nemi Matthews, the city's street and sanitation superintendent. The votes were 235 to about 180. Smith campaigned on bringing new business to Earl, including a grocery store and improving public safety. Alongside his new position as mayor, Smith is also a student at Arkansas State University in West Memphis. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.